Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. I am still T Maso at thewatchbox.com. It is still in the description below. It is still your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly. I am still T Maso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing a landmark model launched in 2007, possibly the chronograph of that decade. This is the Chagher Lecoultre Duomet a Chronograph, a timepiece 42 millimeters in diameter here in rose gold. It is 13.9 millimeters thick and from lug tip to lug tip, measures 50.2 millimeters with a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now, I owned the dimensionally identical white gold limited edition version of this watch for for four years and I loved it. It was my grail watch for four years. It was my flagship of the collection for four years. And I have an incredibly fond memory of my time with it. And there were never any questions of whether it fit. So you could see here, while the watch does push out to the edge of my wrist, I think you could probably still wear this watch on a wrist as small as 15 centimeters circumference. And let's zoom out a little bit so you got a better sense of it on my wrist. My wrist and my arm actually not as small as you might think. So the watch wears just fine and I'm pulling it quite tight. Now it's not a super thin watch, but you can see with a sloped bezel and a sub 14 millimeter thickness, it'll slide underneath dress cuffs. We'll take one last look down the barrel where you can see that I do have a little bit of clearance on each side. Okay, getting close again. We take a look at the watch's many distinct features. One of JLC's best straps, they can be hit or miss with these, but here we have large rectangular scale alligator leather in a semi-gloss finish. We've got a folded edge with a monotone stitch on the bottom calfskin. You can see no crimping, no gouging. It's a brand new JLC factory strap. This is equipped with JLC's I call this their third generation deployment clasp. The first two generations were single fold. This is the original double fold that came out in roughly 2005. And so you can see it has a double fold action. It is friction fit, so snap shut. This not being a sports watch, that's not a great compromise. The fact that you have the deployment clasp is actually kind of important because later on JLC would start trying to cut costs in the Duomet family to bring the price down and the deploying class would give way to a pin buckle on many of these so I'm happy to see this here. Uh, you can also see that the case is well frankly spectacular. Take a look at this case construction. That is welded lug case construction at its best. The lugs are stepped out a little bit like a langa but not every langa has welded on lugs. And you can see how these are physically one with the mid case, the two pieces made separately, and then the lugs inserted into slots in the case band and then welded on with all evidence of the gathered weld material removed to create these super sharp breaks. And then you can see that the watch is double finished with polished lug faces and then a satinated case and the case is satinated all the way around. You can see that there's a little micro bevel on the upper lip of the case and then the bottom of the watch is concave and stepped back to make it look thinner on the wrist. There's a short vertical lip to the bezel and then a conical plane. Later on, there would be a domed bezel available on the Duomet models, but this is the original conical bezel. You could see it is a mono pusher and that the mono pusher itself has both satin and polish. We have a combination of polish and media blast on the crown and this one crown winds both of the barrels. You wind them in different directions. You can see how we've got this vintage Grand Sonnerie style double barrel with ratcheting stop system. And these are dynamometric, so you can't accidentally overwind them, which is a nice feature to have. But you wind them in opposite directions. When one winds, the other free wheels and ratchets. So that's how that works. Rolling around the dial, it is a beautiful granular texture foreshadowing similar fine and coarse grained dials JLC would start deploying in the 2010s. Now there's a lot going on. This watch was inspired by a minute repeating chronometer a pocket watch in the JLC Heritage Gallery that probably included an abouche by Victor Piguet, which was famous for making those dual train movements in the 19th century. 
And so this was considered to be a more viable prospect as a reliable wristwatch only in the modern era with the advent of modern machining techniques, precision assembly, and computer-assisted design. So we'll talk about that more in a moment, but let's talk about what you get on the dial. As you can see, several different changes of plane on the dial disc itself. We have a little rose gold caliber 380 notation. Blued hands, including the power reserve indicator, are for chronograph functions, and rose gold hands are for the time of day function. So you can see we've got our power reserve, we've got our running center seconds, we've got our hours and minutes, two 50-hour power reserves, because you have two separate power reserves, and when you turn on the chronograph, you bring the second drivetrain and the second power supply online because you double the drain on the watch you double the power that's available and thus this is one of only a handful of chronographs in the world that can actually operate the chronograph without any loss of balance amplitude or slowing of the movement because when you draw more power with the chrono you also bring more power online with the second barrel and unlike for example the FP Journe Santagraph Souverain or Santagraph Sport where you you don't lose balance amplitude, but you do lose power reserve. The fact that you have two independent power reserves means that neither amplitude nor power reserve is affected by activating the chronograph on this watch. And because it has a 3 hertz beat rate, or 6 beats per second, the chronograph side of things is able to resolve intervals as small as one-sixth of a second. You can see how perfectly aligned that hand is. Now we have our chronograph sixths of seconds, seconds. We have our chronograph single-digit minutes in this little scrolling digital scale, tens of minutes with the longer hand, and then hours, which you can see on the inner scale features a 12-hour format. Also note that the way the minutes are laid out the minutes go from zero all the way around to 60, so it is a 60-minute register. And because this is a mono pusher, uh, you do have to reset before you restart. So we'll do that, which is always a lot of fun to watch. And then outstanding. Taking a quick look at the case back, you can see it is a mono pusher. This is the dual wing movement. So two separate movements, two separate drivetrains, two separate power supplies with a single oscillator that acts as the traffic cop switching between them back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, releasing bursts of energy in turn from each barrel. So two movements with a single oscillator, that's the way to understand this. You could see that we have this column wheel down there being a mono pusher. It only has four crenellated towers. Its function is fairly simple. You could see that all the levers and horns of the chronograph, as well as the recentering hammers, they're all steel. So take a look, they're beveled on their side and then satinated across their top. Everything here that's steel is silver. So screws, the regulator cap, the barrels, you can see all of the chronograph components. And then the bridges and the plates are what would be called German silver if this were a longa, but we are in the Valley du Jeu in Switzerland, French Switzerland, so we call it Maichot. It's the same material, nickel, copper, and zinc, with the copper giving it its golden hue. This is a very colorful movement. Now, the case is 50 meters water resistant, which is unexpected because dress watches conventionally are 20 to 30, so that's nice to see. And you can see this has been through the 1,000 hours control, which is a 41-day test of the entire watch. Water resistance, power reserve, chronometry, overall durability, and these were regulated to no worse than about plus four, minus one seconds per day. So the dual mets were regulated like flagship complications too far in excess of chronometer standards. And again, it is a fully cased up six position chronometry test of the watch, not a five position bare movement test like the COSC. So we've got our three hertz oscillator. We've got the column wheel. And you're wondering, what about the clutch? What kind of clutch do we have here? Well, it's a little bit complicated because there's always that second drivetrain, which is held in tension by the second barrel and then held fast by a sort of finger lock system. There is an arbor that drives off the escape wheel, which you can kind of just see below my finger. And that arbor that drives off the escape wheel will engage and disengage the drive of the second barrel, basically meaning it's always in tension, it's always ready to jump due to the energy of the second barrel, and what's happening here isn't a clutch so much as it is a release 
of an already tensioned drivetrain. So all of the chronograph indicators, like the one-sixth of a second, the center seconds, the minutes, there's no engaging them so much as there is a releasing of them. And they're always under tension, so the wheels are always meshed. That's why, just reset right there. What you got to do is when you reset this, you got to hold till the foudrillon recenters and then let it go. So you can see as it gets into action right there, there's no jump of the chronograph second sand. So it's as seamless as a vertical clutch, but it's not quite a clutch per se. Uh, taking another look at the reverse side, the finishing is beautiful. You also note that it's free sprung for precise adjustment and durability. You always want a free sprung regulator to maximize those qualities of precise adjustment and durability against shock. Now, if you look carefully, you can see that the bevels on the edge of the bridge and also some of the steel chronograph components, bridges and chronograph components have a lovely mirrored bevel on their side, which is far superior to what you'll find on other sub $100,000 JLCs. Really, I always got the feeling that something, whether it was just the style sensibility or actual know-how, was borrowed from JLC's Richemont stablemate Longa to make this watch, because it really does look like a Longa movement in style, in finish, in materials used. We have what's known as Cote de Soleil, or a sunburst uh, striping, not Cote de Genève, the imaginary center center point is the top of the balance wheel, and then these stripes radiate out across the bridges. Take a quick look, and you'll see we have both polished screws here and fired blued screws, so we've got both of them. And in general, the distinction is that the polished screws seem to be more associated with regulation of the mechanism, whether the winding system, chronograph, or time-telling functions. That tends to be where you see the polished screws, functional screws. The blued screws appear to just fix things in place. So that's a signal to the watchmaker when he's reassembling what these screws are supposed to be used for. You can see there's satination on the wheels as well as satination on the chronograph components. And then we've got this beautiful sort of engine turning on the cover of the, the barrels right here with micro beveling on the teeth of the barrels or the, the ratchet, what are effectively the ratchet wheels, although the ratchet wheels are at center and you can see that those have become solarized. So this is a deeply detailed movement of exceptional quality and depth. You really look down past these exceptionally deep recesses in the caliber 380 dual wing. And you can see that even the jewel sinks here have been mirror beveled internally. This is a watch that exhausts all of the superlatives. If you love this watch, probably the chronograph of the 2000s, reach out to tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.